Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. I now bring you to Molong, New South Wales, to show you one of the nicest private truck collections around. It's not about quantity, it's all about quality in this week's Classic Restos on the Road. Today I'm taking you to two locations here in Molong, but here's the first. 37-year-old Andy McKenzie collects trucks and restores trucks. These former highway thumpers are enjoying a more retired lifestyle these days, looking as good, or if not better, than when they were new. Worth a trip to Molong out west. How are you doing, Andy? Good, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Love your collection. Thanks, mate. Thanks for that. Uh, it's a shed just hidden away uh, down a side street and inside. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of pretty well hidden from, from anyone else and they just get tucked away in here, so... Where do trucks go back with you? Little kid? Yeah, back to when I was on the farm and driving around the Aldi Nationals with Dad and moving them up in the wheat lines and yeah. that's about all, yeah. I don't, I'm not a truck driver by any means and uh, neither's, neither's my dad, so a lot of people ask that question, but yeah, we just got in, I just started to, took a liking to them, so. Yep. Isn't that nice? These trucks are just like classic cars, they're like classic bikes, the machinery that, that surrounds us, they've got stories, they've got history. A lot of these trucks went for many years sitting around in paddocks and, you know, to see them like this restored, that one in front of us there, uh, a totally original truck and unrestored is one thing but then we go to the other trucks around us uh, and the Ford behind us that you've invested a lot of time into they are absolute masterpieces Andy yeah yeah that's right and some of the ones you find like that are, are too good to to do up and then other ones are, are worth doing up so um, that's it you just got to pick and choose which ones you want to do up and which ones you don't yeah exactly just like cars leaving them with their natural patina can sometimes mean more as well yeah and a lot of people like that more too these days it's uh, probably more so they they enjoy seeing them that way so yeah. um just overall that the trucks around us in here when you found them were they were they basket cases or were most of them in fair condition most are in fair condition you sort of pick which ones you want to do up in and which ones you know you can do up and I'm not saying that everything some things aren't restorable but some things are easier to restore than others yeah. it's so. a head start when, yeah. when the bodies and the chassis are good that's a it's a head start yeah. to the restoration that's right yeah some some ones you you can pick and choose but like the Ford behind us here it, it was a full resto with it needed a new chassis and everything so but you can't find another one so yeah. That Ford behind us, that's, uh, I, I guess, in these days, when we talk of the F650s and, and the larger F trucks, these trucks, the 8000 back in their day, they were a big truck. Yeah, that was a big truck. So that was the biggest truck Ford had at the time. Yeah. So, um, and they sort of left their run a little bit late behind the internationals and stuff, and then they went to the, to the Louisville. But, yeah, that was the biggest truck they made. So I love what you've done up front there with the big super singles in front, the wider track. It just looks so menacing from the front. Yeah, well, it, and then it could take it because of the big guards, so you can you can put that on, them rims on that. They suit some trucks and not others. Andy, what I like too, you're by no means an old guy. No. Uh, y you've got a collection here that that could almost represent a lifetime of uh, collecting trucks and restoring trucks. Um, a couple of times now in Classic Restos, uh, Frank Pace from Pace Farm Eggs uh, really inspired me and to, to see how trucks could become when you restore them. And you can search for the episode on the Shannon's Club there and, and look for the episode there with Frank Pace because uh, looking at these trucks in here reminds me of that interview that I had with him. And it's so good to come out west and see a similar type of, of collection where the quality is just paramount yeah and we get that a lot a lot of people say you're quite young to be to doing them up trucks but um you know i suppose it's a passion i got from my father who collects old old tractors that which i was never really interested in and i just got into the trucks so and i've met a really a lot of really good people from it so and got quite a few friends that are, are, are well worth having because of the restoration so You've got a great eye for detail, like the attention to detail on these trucks, Andy. They're, they're, they're brilliant. They're concourse. Yeah, and it's a credit to the to people I've got that um, 
that helped me restore them. You know, the the, the painters, the sign writers, the chrome platers, uh, and all that. It's a the, the motor trimmers. It's a it's a credit to them. You know, so we do most of the work ourselves. But there's certain things you you need to get yeah. the professionals to do. So and what's it like when you go to truck shows? Do some of the older drivers come up to you and oh mate, you know, and they want to tell you stories about all the trucks the all the time and all. All about, oh, I used to drive one of these, or my dad had one of these, or my brother had one, and yeah, I remember seeing these, and yeah, yeah so. It, it gives you a respect when you when you hear the stories too. Uh, the amount of sweat that was dropped in these cabs from the conditions that the guys had. No air conditioning, 38 degree heat, driving west, uh, nine times out of ten the rubber boot around the gear stick. Uh, that was just a that was like a hair dryer coming through there, and these were the conditions that the guys did interstate in every day of the week. Yeah, and that's it. And people say, oh, "Geez, how did they do it?" Well, that's all they had. Mm. So they had to do it, so there was nothing else. And like I've said before on other episodes of Classic Restos as well, when they were doing it, they were possibly comparing it to their father's truck of, say, 20 or 25 years earlier than that again, which was even slower and even harder. So although they had those conditions, they probably considered themselves as doing okay. Yeah, yeah, 100%. They, every, I suppose you only got to look... I think from 70 to 80, it was a big change, you know, like... That's when you started to get air conditionings and air suspension and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So, yeah. But yeah, definitely like in the 50s and 60s, it must have been a horrible job. It's also interesting to see how trucking has evolved with interstate because it depicted a period where there was less population in the country and obviously the size of the trucks. Um, they've had to get bigger in time as, as populace has increased. In the early days, rail was used a lot to do interstate and then the smaller trucks uh, took freight from the rail sightings into towns so when you went way back there was a lot less call for truck interstate on the road yeah and also people weren't in as, as much of a hurry then i feel mm. they weren't in the you know things didn't need to be overnighted if it took three days to get there it took three days so yeah. I, I feel like yeah that was a big change when and we're now we're living in a world where we want things now and back then it just it turned up when it turned up so i suppose that's the difference it's amazing too, though, when interstate did start evolving too, uh, when uh, they they stopped, well, they used rail less, and more trucks did highway work, and the the sizes of the trucks increased. But when we look around these trucks here, they were considered big trucks in their day. When you stand in front of them, they they kind of are. I mean, you, you could appreciate 40, 50, 60 years ago, um, they were a big vehicle on the road. Yeah, yeah, and that's the the collection I've got was my sort of focus on the bigger trucks of the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Um, that's what I, I like, the, I like the prime movers with the step tanks and, yeah. and the diesel motors and that, yeah. so. Andy, all I can say, it's a credit to you, and there's uh, people in the in the trucking fraternity that, that do know you, uh, and of course, uh, Bruce Gunner knew that uh, was here this morning, and uh, he's impressed with your work as well. And this is the thing where a lot of guys in the fraternity get to know who does good work, who's got what. It is a close family, and uh, it's a it's a bloody good one at that. So, Andy, thanks for catching up uh, with me today for this episode of the show. And as I alluded to earlier. Every truck has a story, and we're about to hear some of those stories right now. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Flash. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them, and racing. If you're into rods or customs, you'll know what I mean. It's all about passion, purity, and soul. Customs and hot rods, like the SoCal Roadster, is what we do. And insurance for cars like ours is what Shannon's do. Rods, customs, and even your daily drive. Call Shannon's on 134646. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Like us. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools. 
sandblasting cabinets through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machineryhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. I found this, this uh, International C1800 at, uh, at Tullamore um, on, a, on a place that wasn't being used at the time. Um, and um, it had a V8 Cummins in it, which we weren't sure about whether it had been fitted from the factory or not, because I'd never seen another one until we got there and we opened the door and it was stamped on there saying that it was a V8 Cummins from the factory. So it's still the only one we've ever seen with a, with a V8 in it from the factory. Um, it was ordered new uh, into Cobar. Um, it was ordered to, I talked to the, the bloke that owned it originally son and he said dad ordered it for a job. He had a big job cart and stock out of Queensland and he ordered it with that motor in it to do the job. And by the time International built the truck, he said the job had finished. He said, but he'd already paid for the truck, so he had to take it anyway. So uh, yeah, that's where we found it. And yeah, it, it went, so it carted, carted stock for the first bit and then, uh, then did wheat at Tullamore for after that. We had it in the shed and we were, we were started restoring it, weren't sure how, it was the first one we did, so we weren't really sure what we were doing. Um, and it came to the point where I was whether to pull the cab off or not. And an, an old bloke came into work and he was telling me, he goes, if you're going to catch the train to Sydney, you get off at Central, not at Strathfield. He said, pull the cab off and do it properly. So we pulled the cab off, we did it properly. Um, it took around about 12 months to do up. Um, it was a ground up resto, the engine was out. We put a different gearbox in, we put a road range gearbox in it. Um, the engine had a bit of work done to it while it was out. Uh, the chassis was sandblasted and the cab was stripped back and painted in the spray booth and it was just done, yeah, it was done right. It's a 210 horsepower truck and it had a five speed gearbox in it at the time. Um, I'm not sure that the actual weight it would have been able to carry. Um, it's probably, it might have been carrying around the 20 ton mark like that. Um, I'm not sure what it was legal or how much they would have put on it. They would have overloaded it back then. It would have been one of the bigger trucks with the V8 in it in the day. This truck in behind me has probably been the first one we restored. It probably pulls to the heart a bit more because it was um, the first one we really got into and, and restored up. And like I say, it is a special truck with that V8 Cummins in it. There's not many around that we've seen with that. So I feel we did a pretty good job of it. Um, and, the, and the tradesmen that helped me to work on it did a, did a good job to help. So. That's why we, we probably like this one a fair bit. This is a 1978 Dodge uh, D5N700 Detroit, um, the biggest Dodge they made at the time. It's got a 10 speed road ranger in it. Uh, we bought it from the Doosan family at, at Barradine, whose, whose grandfather used it as a logging truck. Um, it had the Jinko on the back of it and everything. Uh, they had it in their family for, oh, I thought he said they got it in about 1980, so they had it pretty much from new. I pestered him and handed him for a while to get it and, and finally he, he's, the young bloke sold it to me and uh, yeah, that's where it came from. With a few upgrades on it, it certainly makes it drive a lot better uh, with, the, with the nine inch offsets and the, and the faster diffs and the, and the air brakes. Um, we haven't done a lot of driving on this one, it's only just been finished and now we haven't really been to any shows with it. Um, but uh, the people love the, love the Detroits, the noise of them and the sound of them, so with the supercharger on them. So as I said, it was like a one owner truck. Um, we thought it was in pretty good nick. Uh, it's had a bit of signs of rust coming through. We pulled it right down and pulled the cab off this one. Um, found it had been painted about 20 years ago and it had a lot of bog in it, uh, which was quite disappointing at the time. We had to um, yeah, spend a lot of time repairing this one up. Um, and we had it all painted up. It was a pretty plain truck being just white with the blue chassis until um, Chocks from Heyman Signs really Put the, put the icing on the cake and made it what it is today. Yeah, you can certainly appreciate the, the old time drivers and, and the job they had driving one of these old things, you know, from Sydney to Brisbane or Melbourne to Brisbane and, and listening to the racket and the heat and the noise inside the cab and, and sleeping across the seats in them. Certainly different to what they, they do today, but um, you know, it got the job done. That's all they had to do it. Over the right shoulder here, we've got the, the 1968 Ford F8000. Uh, pretty special truck, there's uh, not too many around. Um, 180 Cummins in it, uh, with, a, with a blower on the side of it, five-speed Spicer. It was a, it was a local truck, uh, a farmer here had it, and uh, before that it was uh, used for, used to cart logs from Orange to Oberon. Yeah, it was put off the road for Rego a few years back now, uh, and uh, I, I tracked, down the, tracked him down and asked him what he's doing 
with it and uh, we, we ended up buying it and it, had, it, was, a, it was a fairly lengthy restoration. Um, had to have all new chassis pressed up, uh, new cross members. Uh, the cab was knocked around a little bit, but I, I felt the truck was worth, worth doing up because uh, there's not too many around. The truck itself, it's, it's standing up pretty high. Uh, they, were, they were always known as a big truck in their day. Uh, the 8000 was the biggest Ford made. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's quite hard to get into um, with, the, with it being so lifted up. Um, we haven't changed anything on it like that. We just set the springs and stuff. It hasn't been lifted or the cab hasn't been raised or anything like that. They were brought over in shipping can containers from America and put together in a factory in Sydney. The cab itself is pretty well the same as a F100 cab, except it's got the higher roof on it. It's a really good truck to drive. Um, it, it steers and sits on the road really good. We've taken it on a few runs and uh, it did, uh, did a haul on the Hume run, pulling a spread McGrath trailer. Um, the, the paint on it's a little bit metallic. We call it Mackenzie Fleet Green. It's the same as the International that we, we saw earlier. Heyman Signs did the sign work on this one again too. Did a, did a really good job and, and brought it up. And, and with all the chrome work on that, it, like I say, it draws a lot of attention at, at shows. And, and the, the trim in it, we, we went a little bit, uh, I suppose, different to the norm. And we put a, like a cream colour in it just to really, because it went with the green really good. And the, and the trimmer did a really good job on it. So um, yeah, it was a pretty long restoration. It was a, two years, I think, that one took to do. Uh, on and off, where it was sort of a bit stop-starty, but yeah, I found it. I found it different because it was different to any of the other ones I'd done. I was sort of mainly international and Dodge, and I'd never done a Ford, so it was a lot different to to doing the, any of the other stuff I'd done. I think it's good to um, to preserve the stuff and 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 look after it and get it out of the paddocks. Um, it's just sitting there, not being used and and wasting away. And there's a lot of vehicles that's still still doing that at the moment. A lot of a lot of people think so. All the good stuff's gone. I still think it's out there. You just got to find it. Um, it it means it means a lot to me to get them back to how they used to once look, and and it, it also means a lot when you take them to shows to see the old blokes come up and and really admire what you've done, and and you know thank you for keeping that old stuff alive. Okay, Fletch, thanks for coming out and uh, seeing my collection and, and showing it on on the episode, and uh, I, hope, I hope everyone enjoys it. Are you a motoring enthusiast? Does your current insurer understand your passion? At Shannon's, we're motoring enthusiasts, just like you. We understand the passion you have for your special car or bike. But did you know that Shannon's will also insure your daily drive, the car you drive every day? So if you're a motoring enthusiast, you've got to be with Shannon's. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Got a classic truck? It just has to be insured with Shannon's. Perhaps you're after some laid up cover. Why not give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And the Shannon's Club awaits you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Second location on today's show, we've gone further west. Behind me, yes, a fairly unassuming shed. But what is in behind the roller door will absolutely astound you. Welcome to Craig's Collection, and I could spend a day in here without a doubt. There's a sea of cars, mainly Holdens, along with a few parts as well. This tidy collection represents vehicles from Western Sydney through to the central west of New South Wales. And here's Craig to tell us what he's up to. Well, it's, well first of all I'd like to say thanks for coming up and visiting me actually Fletch. It's a surprise and it's a very good surprise. Um, and I'm also glad that you're intrigued by what I have here. I mean, it's, a, it's been a lifelong collection um, and I've had to let a few go and I've had to pick a few up. But as you can see, I still have them all. And um, even as you said, it seems to be a pretty tidy workshop. So thanks for that. When I was a child, we used to get those Airfix models, little aeroplanes, and then I grew into Revel cars. You know, you get this little model car and I'd paint it all different colors and I'd put it together. And then I think the next thing I did was buy a car and I pulled it apart and I had no idea how to put it back together again, so I sold it. I did that a few times until I realised you've got to learn the trade to, to be able to pull it, you know, put it back together. I still didn't learn the trade, so I just collected the cars and left them all intact until I did a trade and then that's when I sort of went to the next step and started pulling them apart and actually enjoying refurbishing a lot of these old cars to, to you know, the standard that I, I liked. As a child, I... 
I can remember watching the Jim Carners on television, on black and white television, and they were all, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Peter Brock, and they were racing these Tiranas around, through the water, around these dirt tracks, and that's where my, my heart for Holden was born, watching these, these Holdens. Didn't think much of the Fords at the time, little escorts and things like that, but Holden just had my heart, and I've been a Holden man ever since. First car, FJ Ute, second car, FJ Sedan. Once again, pulled them apart, never put them back on the road, stupid me. Then I got a HQ uh, panel van and loved it. And that's my passion for Holden has um, just grown from there. But I've relinquished and I also own other model cars, Chrysler's, Dodge, Ford, because it's all, to me it's all about the style of the car and the way it looks and whether or not I'm attracted to it. Same as with my women. So as you've, you've sort of had a look around, Fletch, you can see the cars, but there's also another side to it and that's the memorabilia that I like as well. The 40s, 50s, 60s, or 70s, when things were simple, um, and, and lifestyle was, a, a, I think, a lot simpler. We weren't as stressed about things because we didn't have mobile phones and those sort of things. And the items we used, we would use them constantly without them breaking down. And we had a lot of faith in those items. And uh, a lot of the cars that I, I pick up, I find memorabilia, that type of memorabilia in them. So I clean them up and I put them in, in the rooms with other bottles, cake bottles, all that sort of stuff ends up out there. And then after a while, I also started just having an eclectic collection of items because once again if I saw something and I liked it I'd buy it work it out later how to pay for it sort of thing thanks mum this bloke here's a man of action how you doing Craig good thanks good Fletch really good good geez mate how much time do you spend in here probably about two or three days a week down here if I can get down here if not um yeah I try and get I try and get as much done in the time that I have down here let's just say that yeah yeah. it's a it's a final testament to never underestimate what's behind a roller door that's true that's true. An eclectic collection. You've got bits and pieces everywhere, but would have to go down, though, as probably one of the neatest collections. It's not as though you're treading over stuff uh, to get from one side to the other. I really like how you've got it laid out. It wasn't always like that, though. When I first moved down here, as you, as you do, you just put things where, quickly where you can. And then over the probably the last 12 months, I've really hooked in and um, been able to put things yeah. where I want them. But once again, next week you come down, you think, I don't want that there, I'm going to move it again. It's just ongoing, Fletch. Craig, with all the things hanging on the wall, I've never seen so many uh, brake and clutch pedal boxes assemblies all along the wall, yep. side by side. Mate, you, you've cornered the market on those, Craig. <laughs> I have wrecked out a few utes, but some of them have to die so others can live, mate. We know that. Yeah. What are you going to do with all of them? A lot of these parts will be used on cars that I have. Yep and whatever isn't used will be probably unsold. Yeah. So uh, donor parts for, for guys looking for bits and pieces, right? Down the track, Down yeah, the track. yeah. Customers' cars maybe, but um, at this stage I'll just use what I need for my cars yeah. and then down the track we'll, we'll go from there. Now, respecting your privacy, it's, it's not open to the public, obviously, no. um, but, but just having this in your possession, it, it, I know that, that sort of a feeling because, look, we all know this stuff's not made anymore. And we're getting back down to the, the last grassroots uh, of what is left. And I'd much rather see them sitting in here. These, these cars are lucky. They're undercover. They're out of the weather. Mate, they're, they're having a holiday in here. They are. And that's one thing that uh, I am happy about, that these cars are out of the element. And I mean, because, you know, but some of these cars have been out in the elements for 30 or 40 years and still are restorable, yeah. depending on where they are. Condo cars, great. Yeah. Cars from the coast, Forget about it, I reckon. But no, it's good to see them you know, undercover finally. We look around here, we see tops of plenum chambers. We've yeah. got guards. Well, if you're yeah, in the United, you've got jokes about them. Yeah, yeah, well, if you're in the United States of America, they're called fenders, and yeah. uh, that's the last thing I want to do, Craig. I don't want to offend you. Oh, I don't want worse. you to be offended. That's all right. You're getting worse, mate. Um, we got we got uh, we got bonnets over there. Yep. Um, you, you've you've got it all stockpiled nicely. Where were you at the point of your life where you thought, hey, look, I, I need a shed because I'm, I'm getting some stuff here? Golly, that would have to have been, um, say, 2000. I sort of got serious. I had a car trailer, but I was just sick of dragging cars around the state. So I thought I've got to get a shed. And then it got, I've got to get a bigger shed. And here we are now with three sheds. So, yeah. Craig, I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you so much for the invitation here, mate. It just goes to show welcome, what uh, potentially you can find behind the odd roller door here and there, and, and uh, it gets back to the preservation of this stuff. It's a credit to you. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Craig. No worries. Thanks, Fletch. Thanks for coming. No worries.
Well, there you have it. I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos on the Road, filmed in the central west of New South Wales, featuring Andy with his immaculate trucks, and of course, Craig in this magnificent shed and what's inside. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gunlake Quarries.